Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna, Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Alhamdulillah, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of the Sunnah Followers Tawheed class. And for the Tawheed class, we will begin a new story series of discussion. We will speak about Islamic morality and character. Islamic morality and character. And we have to understand that in order to be a true believing Muslim, it is important for each and every one of us to have the character and the morality that, that is pleasing to Allah. And the character and morality that is pleasing to Allah is one which consists of his names, one that consists of emulating his names. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed to us over and over again that he was sent to teach us good manners, good morality, good character. And by teaching us good manners, good morality, and good character, in turn, he taught us Islam. And again, you will see throughout this series how that the perfect manners, the perfect morality, the perfect character consists of Allah's name. So with that said, let me put uh, the PowerPoint up for, this, for today. And again, this is the introduction uh, to this series. Uh, Insha'Allah, uh, uh, we'll cover Islamic character, Islamic morality in this series. Uh, and I want to first of all start off today by showing you how the Muslim character and morality incorporates the pillars of Islam, how they incorporate the pillars of Islam. And again, guys, uh, if there's any questions, during the process of this lecture, uh, please uh, hold them for the end. And I also want to remind everyone that there will be daily quizzes. There will be daily quizzes. So you will have a quiz tomorrow that will cover whatever I am teaching today. So remind me to give you the link to the PowerPoint after class so you can review it so that that way tomorrow, uh, you guys can answer the questions for the quiz. And let's start off with uh, today's lecture. Now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that he was sent to teach us morality. He says, I have been sent only for the purpose of performing good morals. And the way that we worship Allah shows that morality. We have to also understand not only through the way we pray, but all the obligations that Allah has imposed on us, you know, uh, all enforce good morals, good character, good behavior. For example, the way we perform our salat, the way we perform our five daily prayers, by performing them, it helps prevent evil. And again, the prayers is one of the, it's the second pillar of Islam. The uh, law tells us in the Quran, he gives us the wisdom behind the prayers. He said, prayer prohibits obscenity. Prayer prohibits evil because we're stopping five times during the day. We're stopping our business. We're stopping our activities to remember Allah. And to whenever we are mindful of Allah, it makes us think twice of our actions and the choices we make. So by stopping five times a day at different times to pray, it helps to prevent us from doing that which is bad, that which can cause us to uh, fall into corruption or sin. 
Also, Allah himself tells us in a beautiful Hadith Qudsi, he says, I accept the prayers of the person who adopts the policy of humility with it on account of my greatness and who obliges my creatures and does not insist on sinning against me and who spends his day remembering me and who is kind to the poor, kind to travelers, kind to those who are weak and those who are suffering. So here we can see simply by performing our five daily prayers, we are learning humility. By performing those five daily prayers, you know, it helps us to be, to have empathy for others. It helps us to be kind to others and to be kind to those who are weaker than us and suffering. Okay, so that shows how simply performing our five daily prayers on a regular basis helps to develop our morals. It helps us to become people of humility. And then we have zakat. Zakat is the third pillar of Islam. And zakat is an Arabic word that means giving in charity. And whenever we give in charity, this is a form of purification. And Allah made zakat obligatory upon those who qualify for it. And the purpose of paying the zakat tax is to help those who are in need. It helps you to develop empathy and sympathy towards others. It helps you to develop the characteristics of love and friendliness and to put those into society. So again, you know, we see how the five pillars help us as Muslims to develop our morality. Zakat, Zakat is not just limited to money. Zakat can take on different forms. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, he said to smile in the company of your brother or sister in Islam. This is a form of charity. To command others to do good deeds and to prevent others from doing evil is a form of charity. To guide a person to a place where he can go astray is charity. To remove something troublesome from the road is an act of charity. To pour water into a mug for another person is an act of charity. You know, to guide a person who can't see is a hack, a act of charity. So again, Allah knows that not all of us have money. So not all of us are able to help others financially, but we can help in other ways, helping a person across the street, picking up something harmful from the road, you know, giving advice to another person, you know, carrying the groceries in for another person, holding the door open for another person. Anytime we do a good deed, that is considered an act of charity. And Islam encourages charity. And so by doing good deeds, this not only helps to reinforce your belief in Allah, but it makes you a better person, a more charitable person. And that's what we need to be, okay? And also the fourth pillar of Islam is fasting. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the call to, uh, to prophethood, not only did he teach the people to believe in Allah, not only did he teach the people to pray the five prayers every day, not only did he teach the people to give in charity, but he also taught them to fast. Why? Because fasting is a stepping stone to righteousness. And fasting in and of itself also helps to teach good morals. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, fasting is not the name of just keeping away from eating and drinking, but instead fasting is to keep away from evil and obscene things. If in the state of fasting, someone tries to pick a quarrel with you, just tell them I am fasting. Again, fasting. When we're fasting, we're spending our time, not just refraining from eating, not just refraining from drinking, 
but we're spending our time refraining from giving in to our emotions. We're refraining from allowing others to make us angry. We're refraining from backbiting. We're refraining from gossip. We're in refraining from hurting others with our tongue and hands. We're refraining from those activities, those bad, obscene activities that we can so easily fall victim to. So this is why fasting is a great way to develop and earn good morals, good character because you're learning to control your emotions, to control your desires. So here again, you get to see how by teaching us those five pillars, the prophet in turn taught us good morality. And then the last pillar, the last pillar for us is the pillar of Hodge. How does Hodge uh, reflect upon character? How does Hodge, making Hodge reflect, reflect upon morality? Well, Hodge weakens your love for this world. Hodge weakens your desire to attach yourself to much of this world. We talked about how the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised us to be in this world as if we are a stranger or a traveler. Because if you are a, a traveler, you won't attach yourself too much to anything here. You will only take what you need for the journey. And if you are a stranger, you will accept that you're not like everyone else. And so the months of Hajj, if these are the months in which we perform the Hajj and we don't indulge in sexual activities or bad actions or fighting or arguing. And that's why the prophet said, whoever uh, performs Hajj and stay away from these things, he will walk away with complete forgiveness of his sins. So again, guys, the five pillars of Islam. They are the stepping stones, the beginning of good morality. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved to Medina and he was able to send other of others of his companions out to teach Islam, one of the first groups he sent was headed by Mu'ad. And these were when the people of Yemen the people of Yemen embraced Islam. They were Christians. They converted to Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Mu'ad. He was the first ambassador of Islam. He told him, I am sending you to Yemen. These people have converted to our belief system. This is what you teach, how you teach them. You start off by teaching them the meaning of la ilaha illallah. And only after, only after they understand what it means to believe in Allah and to follow me as his messenger, then the next thing you teach them is the prayer. You teach them how to perform correctly and what to say for each prayer. And then, and only then after they know it, do you then teach them about charity and then teach them about the rest. So again, as you can see, by teaching the five pillars, we are in turn teaching good manners, good character, good morality, so everything begins with those things. And this is what we do. When a person converts into Islam, a lot of people will come to me and they will say, dear sister Layla, uh, someone just converted to Islam. What should I teach them first? Well, first of all, teach them the meaning of la ilaha illallah. And that's uh, not an easy process. You know, that's a long process. Because when we declare la ilaha illallah, we are declaring allegiance to Allah, allegiance to his prophet, and allegiance to, the, to, uh, to all the believers on earth. That means we have to set aside our allegiance to other things, 
There no longer do we pledge allegiance to America. No longer do we pledge allegiance to a country. No longer do we pledge allegiance to a flag. No longer do we pledge allegiance to a part of the earth. No longer do we pledge allegiance to a building. Our allegiance is to Allah and then to the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then to the believers here on earth, no matter who they are, what race they are, where they live. People have to understand that all of that is in that shahada. And then we have to break it down. What does it mean to have allegiance to Allah? Well, having allegiance to Allah entails believing in all his books, believing in all his angels, believing in all his prophets, not just one or two, all of them. Believing in everything that Allah told us about, the, about what's going to happen in that grave, everything he told us about paradise, about hell. It also entails believing that Anything that happens in this world, be it good or bad, it happens because Allah willed it. And this is a problem that Muslims have today. We're so quick to blame the bad things that happen on earth on other people. No, Allah is in control. It's not America. It's not Europe. They're all just puppets. Allah. He tells us whatever good befalls you comes from me. And whatever evil befalls you comes from me too as a result of what you've brought on yourselves. So again, when we declare la ilaha illallah Muhammad Dor Rasulullah, there's a lot that goes into that. And that's a whole series of lectures in and of itself. But once the people understand where their allegiance is, where it's supposed to be, once the people understand that Islam is their culture, then we teach them the prayers, the prayers. And by teaching them those prayers, <clears throat> we're teaching them humility, how to perform them the way the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us how to perform the positions correctly what the sunans of the prayer are what the pillars of the prayer are all of that we should know why we raise the finger is raising the finger an obligation when pronouncing the tashahud no it is not but by raising the finger, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that finger becomes an iron bar that keeps shaitan back. It keeps your personal jinn from distracting you. Do we have to raise our hands before and after bowing? No. But why did the prophet teach us that? Because when you raise your hands up and say Allahu Akbar and then push them down, you're pushing your personal jinn back. You're pushing back his whispers, pushing back his distractions. So after we understand la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah then we need to go into the fiqh of the prayer understand why we do what we do during the prayer and by understanding why we do those things it'll make our prayer more sound it'll make your kushua more developed and then after that only after that do we then focus on zakat and we explain to the people how zakat, you know, is charity. And any good action is an act of charity. And that if you want your acts of charity to be accepted, they have to be done the way Allah legislated. So if you're going to give someone a gift, don't be a dog and take it back. Okay? Don't be like a dog who swallows his own vomit and asks for it back. Okay, there we have to do the good deeds the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to do them. And then after that, we go to Hajj. So see, you can see guys learning the five pillars. It's a process. Learning the five pillars is teaching you good manners, good character, good morality. 
And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this series that I'm teaching now. We're going to focus on good morality. And I want you guys to see how those five different pillars play a hand in that. And then after learning about those pillars and how they play a hand in forming our morality, I'm then going to take you into the character of the Muslim, how our character should be. And you will see that the characteristics we're supposed to have as Muslims are those attributes of Allah, those names that we talked about of Allah. And then after learning the proper characteristics we should have, we're gonna talk about the Islamic personality because your personality will then be shaped so strong and so rigid that it'll be hard for a hypocrite or an unbeliever or shaitan himself to take you down. So this is what we're gonna cover you know, over uh, the next uh, few weeks. So I want everyone here to reflect upon this, Allah tells us in the Quran and the interpretation, the meaning, surely he who appears before his Lord as a criminal, there is a hell for him in which he will neither die nor live in. And he who will appear before his Lord as a, as a faithful person well, who has performed good deeds for such people, there are high positions and evergreen paradise beneath which candles will flow and they will live there forever. That's the reward for those who adopt purity. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on. I'm gonna be focusing in this series on t character building, teaching you the character, teaching you the morality, teaching you the personality that Allah wants us to have so you won't be like a criminal. Instead, you'll be like one of those who are blessed. Okay, so we're going to stop right here for, day, for today. Today was just an introduction. Tomorrow, what I'm going to do is give you a quiz to cover how it is and why it is that those five pillars help to shape good morals. And then we'll go into the details with the first lecture of this series. So, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu